are you a fan? Bronte, because I know you've, you've only just recently retired, but and VAR has only just come into the picture, but are you a fan of it? I mean, earlier today, Liverpool had a penalty very late on, 89th minute, and I'm not sure if you saw it, but it was literally a rugby tackle on Jota, which, uh, which brought it about, which wasn't spotted by the ref. It only came about because of VAR. And there's been decisions, I'm sure, for every side of the Premier League, either for or against because of VAR. This is just the one that's popped into my head, which seemed to be right. Do you like it or not? I think most players would probably tell you no, especially especially my generation, my age of player. Like you, you're not used to it. So, I mean, give it four or five years, every player will be used to it and it'll just become second nature to everybody. So, personally, no, I think it, it slows the game down and it creates situations where pe people can can fabricate things really, you know, players and, and staff, I suppose, that you can you can throw your arms about and demand the demand the VAR to check stuff and, and, and things like that. So for me, no, but I get why it's needed. You know, there's so much riding on Premier League games, Champions League games, World Cup playoffs. I mean, for example, we got knocked out of the World Cup playoffs in twenty seventeen by Switzerland and a penalty was given and it hit it hit Corey Evans on the back and they gave handball. You know, if we had had it there I'd have been saying yes. It's <laughs> it's in. We need it. Like VAR is the best thing ever. So, you know, it's it swings and roundabouts, I suppose. But for me personally, I think football is such an opinion opinionated game, and refereeing mistakes or things that aren't spotted are, are part and parcel of the game. Yeah, that's true. Um, you're actually only about a month or two older than me, so I'm very much the same generation as you. But Sharpie, when you look at you look a lot younger than me, to be fair. Oh, <laughs> my hairline would disagree, but. <laughs> when we were about three years old, Chris, Sharpie was making his debut for Torquay United. I mean, the game has changed a lot since then. For some of your generation, Sharpie, where do you stand on VAR enough. and the implementation of VAR? Uh, I have to say uh, I'm not a massive fan. Um, I, think, um, I think if they start getting ex-players maybe in the, in the VAR box, making some of the decisions and, and checking out uh, various things that go on that that may help but i think var gets as much wrong and as much right as as, as a referee does uh and I'm, i agree with Bronze. it slows the game down uh i think you're probably for it if you get a decision from it but you but you're not if you not if you don't but um no i can't say i'm the biggest fan of var uh just a really brief one on this and i know you probably have to be a bit careful of what you say but you're both retired so maybe not what about the standard of refereeing the standard refereeing itself, because VAR has come in to help referees, yet you're both saying there's still question marks about the implementation of it. So what does that say about the refereeings and, and the education that they're having? I, I don't know the entire system. Brunty? I think by, by the introduction of VAR, you obviously, you're taking away that little bit of responsibility that the referee has now. You know, if he's not sure about something, it can be, you know, he's got more help, which I suppose in the grand scheme of things, it, it, things happen so fast in football now, especially now that the game's so quick, you know, you need eyes in the back of your head to see everything, you know, you need the two the two assistant referees, the fourth official to help out. And it's a, I suppose it's an eye in the sky, really, you know. It, it is, I, think, I think the whole concept of it is a good idea, but it does definitely take away a bit of responsibility of the, the man on the park because he sort of... You know, he can be undermined, I think, as well. You know, if, if the players aren't happy with the decision he's made, they just give the old TV symbols uh, with their fingers, don't they? The, the, the square on the thing, go and check it. You know, it's, it's almost undermining the referee's decision sometimes. So maybe the standard refereeing is not helped in some ways by VAR. What about yourself, Sharpie? The standard refereeing now in the current game? Uh, I, th I, think he's, I think he's pretty decent, to be fair. I think referees... All in all, do a, do a really good job. I, I think it's a thankless task. It's a job I wouldn't want to do myself. I, I don't think there's, you know, very rarely do you come off and want to give the referee a medal for having a fantastic game. I think the, the, the best referees are the ones that you don't see or hear of in a game and, and let the game flow and, and make the right decisions at the right time. Um, I agree with Brunty. The game is so fast now that it's difficult for a referee to, to see it, everything that goes on. Um, and I understand that VAR is, is there to help. Uh, but all in all, I, I think uh, I have to say, I think referees uh, are doing a good job. Yeah. Worryingly, though, there have been multiple reports by international publications about refereeing in the future that there's a lack of referees wanting to take up that role on a football pitch at grassroots level to work their way up just because it is such a thankless task, just because 
You go on the social media and you'll see the referees just getting absolutely blasted by every single person out there. Nobody wants to be a ref, so I'm not sure what the future is going to hold for the standard of refereeing if nobody wants to get into it. But that's an argument, a discussion for another day. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Ralph Ragnick is the, apparently the one who's come out to, to give the idea of having referees training with the clubs next season. I'm sure you saw this in the news. Uh, Brunty, firstly for you, can you imagine, I don't know, Mike Dean, I know he's retiring, but Mike Dean training next to you when you were at West Brom or something. Wouldn't that be a bit surreal, a bit odd? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no two ways about it. Yeah, it would be a bit weird. I think I, I think there is method in, in that thing. I think everybody will look at it and go, oh, that's mad like but i think there is there is a bit of sense in it somewhere because you know sharp you'll agree you know when players are being refed in in the training ground you know what coaches are stepping in to do the referee refereeing in training games and stuff like that and they even the coaches get get abused you know in, in the training games you know because because football players are naturally they just they want the win they want things to go their way so possibly having an actual professional referee in the training session to say no actually look you can't do that or I don't know how where you where where do you draw the line? Do you send people off in the training session? You know, like some days if lads don't fancy training, they'll be getting sent off just for swearing at the referee <laughs> or something. You know, just to get themselves in into the uh, into the uh, into the shower early. But you know, where do you draw the line? Sharpie. Well, I, I mean, referees going into training. Yeah, I, I don't think he can he can do any harm. I think. Uh, I think a lot of the responsibility for, for, I think the players need to, I think there needs to be a stronger role for players back chatting the referee. I think, uh, I think it needs to take a step out of the rugby manual uh, and have a bit of respect for referees and you don't argue, you don't surround, you don't bully and harass referees. Uh, I think that's probably the problem. We, we see Premier League players surrounding referees and trying to intimidate them at times. And that, that just ex gets exaggerated because there's no crowd and no cameras at, grassroots you know players are bullying and harassing referees at that level and uh for a fiver at a time tenner at a time for you for, for your time to be taken up on a saturday or sunday morning to referee people that are going to abuse you and bully you uh, i can see why, why the job's uh, not so favorable uh another way to get referees into the game possibly would be ex-players i don't know whether they would be up for the challenge or up for the task but uh, I, I think they sort of would know players that are feigning injury players that have meant to hurt people in tackles and others that have gone in just to, to be strong tackles. So uh, that would be another option I would look at. I'm uh, also reminded of a story Peter Crouch gave a few years ago about John Terry always being extremely nice to the referee, calling them on a first name basis. Bronte, you're, you're nodding your head there as if you've actually seen this yeah. in real life. <laughs> so <laughs> do you think that Having referees training with the players at the clubs, there'll be an opportunity for the players to try and uh, get in with the referees, if you know what I mean. Just tr try and be on their good side, oh. because at the end of the day, referees are human, and, and those split-second decisions, you might get a decision your way or not. 100%. You're opening, you're opening up that can of worms, aren't you? That if something goes your way on a Saturday, everybody will be, that, that'll be the next thing in the media, checking to see what clubs they've trained at that week, to see if, uh, <laughs> if they've been down your training ground after you got that decision. But... Uh, it's, it's a fair point, you know, John Terry and, and Frank Lampard, when Chelsea had that team with Drogba and that, they, they were they were masters at it, you know, they they refereed the game sometimes without actually refereeing the game, you know, they were that good at talking to the referee and getting the referee on board and, you know, you were sort of, you weren't a man down obviously because the referees always got to be impartial but I think they they used they used the referee to their advantage in 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 every especially especially at Stamford Bridge they were they were absolutely brilliant with it you know and they were almost one nil up before before the game even kicked off just purely based on that. What are they saying to the referee though that gets them on side? Just little things, you know. It's not like it's not it's not like a. They're just always on his case, you know. There's a there's a comment for every decision made, you know, whether it's for them or against them. It's little ones that are like, well, well done, ref. Like you know, that was a good decision. Just little things like that. Like we were, we used to try and do it as well. Like, but obviously, sometimes you know, John Terry obviously had a lot more pull than I did on the on the football <laughs> pitch in the Premier League. Like, but um, sorry, my head, my ears keep falling out of my ear. I don't know what's going on. And um, just little things like that, you know, like you, 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 Stephen Gerrard, and and people like that might get a little bit more 
leeway from refs in, at Anfield or even Old Trafford, you know, when Man United had gigs and, and scores and people like that playing, they just, they're just they just clever with it, you know, they're just used to it and they, they know what to say and obviously they're used to they're used to winning games as well, so it's always a, it's, it's almost like a like part of the tactics really, I, I, I would say, if you're clever enough with it. Sharpie, I'm sure you have a say in this, Manchester United, big names, big characters, you were there, so Alex Ferguson on the touch line. I mean, there, there must have been some sort of trying to influence, maybe even from you. Uh, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't talk to referees too far. I didn't, I didn't talk a lot on the pitch. There were, there were, there were certainly um, certain referees that the manager would say you need to approach in certain ways. Uh, some he would think were, were maybe a little bit... Um, I don't know what, what, what the word is, but let, let's say they're a little bit weaker than others so that, so that the players should try and intimidate them at times. There were others where he said, be careful because this bloke likes to send people off. Uh, and, and especially if you get booked, make sure you're extremely careful afterwards because he will look to, to give you a red card. So there, there were certainly certain referees and certain characteristics of a referee that the manager would, would know about and would pick up on. And like Brunty says, when you've got people in your team like Brian Robson, Roy Keane, Steve Bruce, experienced players that, that have been around referees week in week out they know which ones to which ones have the buttons and what buttons to press on any, any certain day yeah yeah that's a good point because i when i remember you playing it was usually a smile on your face not talking to referees